Hello, I'm Steve with Touch the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. Um, I want to talk to you today about a couple scriptures, uh, Psalms 29, 4, and Joel 3, 16. Um, it's about where his voice, guys. So really, anyhow, I'm going to kind of dive into it uh, and then kind of talk a little bit briefly about it. Um, there's so much to share, but it's just not going to all happen. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. I got that. <clears throat> I'm going to read Joel too. Um, let me go ahead and read Joel too, And then I'll tell you what I got. 29, Psalms 29. And Joel just was part of it too. But Sorry guys, I should have marked it. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heaven and the earth will shake. The Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Okay, guys, how I got Psalms 29 was right before our trip to Pennsylvania. The Lord, long story, but, you know, look at some of my other messages, God's road trip, but... Anyhow, he highlighted this real little podunk town in Pennsylvania, 2,200 miles, 2,100 miles away. And one thing that he wanted me to do, find a newspaper and find a reporter. And that was it. Long way to go. Thousands of dollars to get there. Days to drive. Didn't want to do it, but we did. And we did talk to the reporter, a reporter. And we did minister to different people along the way. So we just went, but... Before that, as I was re right before our trip, before we went, I went into Psalms 29, and I read about that, about his voices as thunder and over many waters. And he spoke to me, and he said, we're his voice. So it's time for the church, you guys, the body of Christ, to rise up, to roar, be accounted worthy. This world is twisted up, guys, and, and I don't know. Seems to be crashing fast. Maybe it could be the internet. Maybe it could be the news, whatever. But it's just, it's time for us to shine. The world may come apart, is kind of come apart at the seams. But we're not. We're his glory, guys. Time for us to rise and shine. And be his voice. Be his voice for the unborn. That's kind of a hot button right now with all the crap that went on in New York. But that abortion issue has been going on for years, guys. We just kind of stuck our head in the sand, neglected it, and debated it, and slapped labels on these people. But what have we really done to interject Jesus into those people's lives? Look at my message on what, how God sees America in abortion. <clears throat> it's not just time to expose things, guys. To show the dirt and the wrong and the sin. It's time to be his voice and do something about it. Interject Jesus into these people's lives. Pick someone. Go help them get a house. Help them get a job. Help them get educated. Help them raise that child. Instead of slapping a label on them. You know, my wife and I minister down at the homeless shelter. And they get a lot of labels slapped on them, guys. And yeah, granted, a lot of them are there because of their own sin and doing and decisions. But real prevalent down there is mental illness, drug addiction, just a lot of broken people. But the rich and famous need to be saved too, guys. The millionaire that has a, a son that's on drugs or him, himself on drugs or whatever, you know, they're brokenness, rich and poor. So I'm not saying we need to go after everybody that just, you know, that's kind of religious, you know, a noble cause. I mean, I... Went down to the shelter this last Christmas. We've been there three years, almost three years, two years, two and a half maybe. I hardly see anybody on Sunday nights when we minister from other ministries or anything or even help from different people. My wife and I just do it because that's what the Lord told us to do. I'm not boasting or I'm just being obedient. 
But at Christmas, I couldn't even get in the parking lot. There's 150 people there from all kinds of different churches and shirts on about God and it's just different things. It's like, man, where were you people all year? You give $3 to the homeless or feed them once in a while and think that you're doing a noble cause. So then we got to get off of that. One of the things the Lord told me was it's time for the people in the ministry to get over themselves. They're going to be real popular in the church. It's probably not even going to open doors, you know. People don't want to hear that, especially in the ministry. Then he took me to Corinth, um, Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. That's key, guys. Pray. Who's your source? And where are you getting it from? Prayer. Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, and the Word. And you're going to get it through prayer, seeking Him, setting aside yourselves. We're His voice, guys. Time is time really is pretty short. I said this six months ago, a year ago. People kind of looked at me like, you know, there's just so many things that are twisted up that could crater. I'll give you one that's on the internet this morning. Yellowstone. Old guys are bubbling. That's what I used to say, you know. Well, 60 miles across valley, beautiful. No, not really. It's a, a cauldron. It's a super volcano. Well, guess what's on the news today? Scientists are like this. It was the most active year for, for, this, for this volcano in years. Last year was. There's 400 and it, it, you'd have to, I'm going to have to look at it. I only just briefly looked at it, but there's lava flowing under there and more stuff going on in there. Well, if that erupts, America's toast, guys. But that's not my message. Jesus is. And he's the answer and the solution. It's his voice. And, you know, while we're still here, let's get this done. Get her done like Larry the Cable Guy. Just do it. What's God showing you? What's your purpose? There's stuff on all around, but it's distractions from the true gospel, from where his voice. And we're going to shine as the world comes unglued and people are going to be drawn to us because of the glory of God in our lives, of Jesus living in us. Look at my message on where is glory? But anyhow, it's not me, guys. I'm just directional. It's me. Pretty common person, really. Some of the things God's showing me, I'm like, I'm like, God, I don't want to do that. I, why can't I just go to church and just have a normal, simple life? Why do you have to show me this stuff, Jesus? Pick somebody else. I don't even want the job. Honestly, I Told God that I argued with him about that. So, but I got to do what he tells me to do. I got to be obedient. It's more important than the rest of the stuff. You get sidetracked in all building programs and, you know, a lot of the church swirl is just like a big rock concert, a bigger band and a better screen and a, just stuff. Another thing he told me, he said, I've had enough. The stuff, fluff, and people building, pe people building kingdoms, and people building, taking serfs, turfs, and kingdoms that aren't of me. Building that stuff. Gonna be one in the streets, guys. Like at the nursing home where people are dying, about to step into eternity. At the hospitals, where people are dying. At the jailhouses and the prisons where people have been locked up for stuff, you know, label stamped on them, at the mental institutions, at the homeless shelters, at the 7-Eleven and the streets, you know, a good portion of the world, of, 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 of America is underpaid, you know, because of the greed of companies, you know, so what about those people that are making 10 bucks an hour, all pick a retailer, pick, you know, they're not really doing us any big favors to, to most of, you know, by employing people, most of them are underpaid. A lot of them struggling so that they can make more money. They, it, the favor is towards them, towards the greed and towards them making more money. Sorry. 
but we want to focus, you know, and I'm not focusing on that stuff. I'm saying there's all this stuff that can, that's going on. But it's time to cry out, cry loud, spare not. Come on. I saw this thing on Facebook. I try not to go on there much, a little bit, but it was pretty, pretty, you know, it was like a lot of us are playing hide and seek with Jesus. And he's saying, ready or not, here I come. So it's time to just portray him. Be about our father's business. What's, what's he really telling you to do, guys? And it's not about doing, really. It's about being. It's just listening to him. I don't know what your, you know, your purpose is. We all have one. Read Matthew 20. We're all the same, guys. That's the problem. A lot of people aren't using the Bible. They just twist it up to fit their agendas and needs and wants and desires and things. And, you know, I mean, you know, we kind of hoodwink God a lot. We slap God, 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 a label on and then think that it's okay. Build a, a big church with th thousands of followers. Well, you know, that doesn't mean it's a move of God, guys. Sorry, it may not. It might, it may not. Dallas Cowboys draw 60,000 people every Sunday or whatever, and millions watch it. Is that a move of God, you know? Money, bunch of big, big buildings. Well, AT&T Stadium, I think, was a billion dollars. Is that a move of God? Sorry, guys, you know, we're putting emphasis on stuff that's really not him. Hate to say it. I'm not the finger pointing guy because I got a prodigal son experience. I get the grace piece though. Because he brought me back. After I was mad at him for stuff that I created. It took years to get it out of me. So that's a whole nother story too, guys. But what I'm saying is what's your purpose in Christ? Go, flow, pray. What's he telling you? Just, just do it and kind of ignore, and I'm telling you, insulate, ignore yourself from the rest of this stuff that's going on because, yeah, it's twisted up and coming down. Watch the news for 30 seconds and it'll just, man, it'll either make you mad, depress you, whatever, you know, all these spirits. Pick one, pick a side, you know? All this political crap. This last election wasn't really about who is the who who was going to be better for the country is about who is dirtier really all the name calling and s stuff hatred and vicious viral garbage that'll take a piece of your mind and get you off of the focus of what Jesus wants to do and God wants to do because time is short i don't know how short maybe you know might be another 1000 years might be another 100 might be a day might be not even this message might not even get out Do what's set before you right now. This it, the, the urgency of the hour is souls are at stake, guys. Where would you be if somebody didn't minister to you, witness to you, reach you for Jesus, tell you about getting Jesus into your heart? Where would you be if somebody didn't take the time to do that? Or where would I be? Quit letting all... It, we got to quit letting all this stuff. I, I'm saying that because to open your eyes, the distractions and the things and the yellow stuff is to say it's there. But what's God telling you to do? What's Jesus telling you to do? Who's your source? And with this, a lot of it is, you know, we put value on stuff. If I went to sell my house. Realtor's going to come in, praise it. Neighbor's house sold for X amount, three blocks down, three miles away. What did, you know, Dallas County District appraise it for? It's what it's worth. Not what I want or think it's worth. It's what people are going to pay for it. Well, guess what, guys? God thought enough of you. If you're listening, what, were you, what was your value? His son, Jesus, there at the beginning, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, going to be the judge at the end. 
for your messy, sinful lives. Mine too. And, and, and it's a journey. It's still got, I, I still got issues, things that got to go away. Some, un, some known and some unknown. I'm working on it, guys. But that can't stop what, you know, where he wants you to be, do, place you, intersections of other people's lives. It's not really the doing as the just being. You may be on your way to Target. I know a friend that he was on his way to Target and Lord spoke to him and go, go to one that was 10 miles away when there was one two miles away. It made no sense. His wife, you know, or whatever, but she went along with it because she knew he heard from God. And they ministered to somebody at this Target. A lot. So, be in tune and, and you get it through prayer. Whether it's with your church, corporately, at home, all day long, keep your mind, let the, let, let your mind, you know, let your mind be on him. What he's doing and all this other stuff is just stuff, guys. Distractions, disillusionment, disappointments, um, just, just stuff that's going on all around us. So really, anyhow, that's, you know, we're his voice. So you could be the, the doorkeeper or the senior pastor, but we're his voice, guys. You would be his voice at the guy at 7-Eleven, like I said, or the dry cleaners or the homeless guy in the street or the, you know, you may be wealthy and, well, guess what? The guy that's a multimillionaire needs Jesus too, or the, the women and the children and the, we all need Jesus. Whatever your, you know, stage of life is, it's not about that. It's about us crying out. Being his voice, being his glory, shining to our children, wives, people at the church, people out of the church, whatever, you know. It's Church isn't even really, you know, we put an emphasis on buildings and whose ministry you're under and power and prestige, a lot of it. Guys, we're his church. We're his body. It isn't about addresses and whose ministry you're sitting under or where you're sitting or who you're listening to. Are you really listening to him? You really get, who's your source? Are you really getting it from God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Word? Are you getting it from entertainment or YouTube or whatever, you know? I mean, I'm not even, I, yeah, I'm on YouTube. I'm just directional, guys. I'm just telling you, go to your source. Get it from him yourself. That was God's whole plan was Jesus. And we've taken him out of the equation, unfortunately, in most of the religious church world cultural crap. Sorry. Talk is cheap. We talk about it, slap labels on it, kind of kind of hoodwink, hide behind things. Why do you think he gives you the spirit of discernment? Why is the Holy Ghost so important to be, be living in you? Open your eyes. There's been various different people. It's like, man, guys, I, I've got, I call them landmarks, but I've got some landmarks in my life where Jesus did something so specific in my life. It's like, man, you know, you can talk all the smack and crap and stuff and things and that you want. Ship sailed a long time ago. I've been hearing the voice of God and Jesus for a long, long time, guys. Didn't always listen, but hearing it, was part of my prodigal son experience. I didn't listen. Still hearing it. Just wasn't obeying it, doing it. So he's speaking to you guys. And he's downloading things into us. Why? So we can get it out there and be his voice. Cry loud, spare not. What's he showing you? What's he teaching you? It's for others, guys, to bring him in. Bold. He wants us bold, strong. 
sort of. Shining, but shining with the glory of God, not ours. The whole thing about, I'm going to end with the, you know. So, anyhow, we love you guys. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just didn't think this was going to be a 20-minute message, but it is. But So, anyhow, we love you guys. Um, I'm going to end with that. And you can email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com or put a comment on YouTube. Love to hear from you guys. Thanks. Have a great, awesome day.